All right, so we're back to change that evaporator we diagnosed bad the other day that was leaking. So inside the building, there's zero room in there. The microwave was sitting on top of this unit. Uh, right now, we've got everything recovered. We're going to uh, go ahead and embrace this line here and remake that. Uh, we've already purged the nitrogen through and got that cleared of any residual. Uh, probably going to undo it here in the back, which is another little trick some of you guys have said which will probably help speed it up a little bit. Looks like this has been changed before. You can see how they melted that. I would think the factory had been a little better than uh, that on getting it. See, that's probably brazed about right there, so we'll get that. Not sure we really need to yank it completely out of there. It's just more crap. i got to make more jo braze joints to put it back together. Well, luckily, it's not very cold out here, or I should say at least the wind's not blowing very hard. So. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that up there so it's clean for the next go around. Oh. Nitrogen's coming through here to here, so we'll take this one off first. This right here just barely fits in there, so we may make it just a touch shorter as far as length so it fits in the pan because I mean this is not going to be absolutely perfect, but it'll be doggone close to it. So we're just going to take our bender here, which i got an Imperial here, it does a 180. Once again, this has been my little section of the tools, so if you guys want to get one, if you want to support the channel, head over there into the comment section and you will find that. So I'm going to leave this a little bit long, that way I can bend it up to the refrigerant uh, lines that are currently there. So we'll just go ahead and make sure that bend's finished about there. That right there is going to put us about right at the middle of that bend that we have on the other one. So, here we'll and a 180 is just like that. So you can get smaller ones. The nice thing about this particular one is it does half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch. So it makes it kind of nice. So that's going to match right up that 90 right there. It's uh, not uh, perfect, but like I said, your elbows or your 90s, 180s, whatever are not kinked and it worked pretty good. The reason why I did that was so that I could uh, verify that it was open potentially reduce any potential leaks from the back pressure going through there. What I might actually do here, purge that all out, go ahead and kill it, and then we'll braze it. Okay, we're going to go on the other side, make sure that it's coming through, because now's the time. It's coming through, so we're good there. Uh, finish, maybe clean that up a little bit. We're going to wipe all that crap out down there in that drain pan. It's like I said in the past, that little hole that they got in there to uh, drain it gets plugged up pretty easy. 
This also helped make it a little easier to tell whether it's a new leak or an old leak still there, so just kind of cleaning up your mess. Alright, so I did get a new toy here. I uh, picked up the quarter inch, so that is very difficult to get it to work right. You've got to rotate it at least probably seven times and go super, super slow. And honestly, the best thing to do is just heat it up in advance. The uh, 3 8 isn't as bad. The pipe there on the evaporator needs to be expanded a little bit. like that but I'll tell you what the spin swedge for less than 100 bucks versus this that's well over 400 by the time you add the little head to it a couple extra heads it does awesome that's neat and it was a lot easier than dinking with the spin swedge but if you guys ain't got that kind of crazy money it ain't worth spending it I don't think uh, the quarter was the biggest thing that I use the most as you can see I do a lot of quarter inch repairs but unfortunately no one else has the quarter inch head so I was a little bit upset that the quarter inch will split the pipe most of the time. Um, now if you heat it up ahead of time and get a little warm because like right as you've seen on the thermometer here it's like 30 so maybe when the summertime rolls around and we're in the 80s maybe it'll make it a little different but it can be done it's just a lot a lot of work. So the only thing we got to do now is change this dryer, which that was probably a one-piece unit. I'm not sure how big of an issue that's going to become. So we're going to go ahead and uh, warm this up a touch, and then we're going to expand it because this is quarter inch, and the dryer I want as a uh, perfect cap. just fine when you heat it up. Come back over top here. Try to protect as best we can while we're doing our thing. They don't say you have to do this, but my own experimenting has kind of showed me that's a good idea. It doesn't take a lot of heat, just a little bit. Seems to get it pretty decent. No splits. Good deal. All right. And it's obviously not that hot, so I just got it a little bit warmer. That'll protect a little bit. Most people I've seen set the, let the thing set there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes before they put it in. some nitrogen back through the suctions line that's going to come all the way through and you can feel it there. I thought we were going to 
need to move that up, but evidently we don't need to, so I'm just going to have to rejoin that, not a huge deal. I deburred that and then I blew nitrogen through it to get any specks of crap out of it. But my idea here is to make it so my pockets are on the bottom, that way everything falls down as far as when I'm brazing it into place. I basically cut one extra spot that I didn't need to do, so I made a mistake there. The only reason why this torch would make this copper carbon up is if you get it so hot that you cause it to plate. The hand torch, if you don't sit there and take it glowing red, is not going to plate it. You know, the copper, all I'm doing is basically warming up the copper so that it expands a little easier. not to have to do that. Yeah, I would have. The reason why I cut this one longer was so I could keep away from the element here because you get these too hot and they will change color and you'll destroy them. And this is one that you can't change. This is just a moisture indicator like I said in the last video. Uh, you shouldn't really charge by it or anything like that, but it will at least tell you that you got issues without having to put gauges on it. It'll also tell you if you got moisture or not. So, um, got that back in place everything went pretty good from what I can see here didn't hardly heat it up much at all yeah I cool it down a little bit but I don't just nail it immediately there's some time frames in here uh, that are cut out that you guys don't see to speed the video up go ahead and uh, get that vac put back into place and uh, go ahead and start pulling a vacuum on this thing thought I'd take a check at this real quick and it's still nice and solid and it's holding down so Doing good in here. Give me a second to warm up too. Needed some uh, electrical, so we've got some electrical here. We pull back on this thing. So for experimental purposes, went ahead and yanked the valve cores. Kind of seeing how fast this thing pulls down. It's been forever since I used the regular shitty hoses. So seeing what it's doing. Don't seem to be doing too horribly bad. I mean, this thing only holds 13 ounces, 14 ounces, so. Got to uh, finish uh, getting some of this put back together here. So we'll get that done. And then uh, get that coil in there and we'll see where we're at. So I figure I'll let this pull vacuum while we're waiting on it to vacuum. We'll get some of these other things tied in. Yeah, it's back the way it was. Hopefully that was the way it was last time. Okay, so here we are. 
several, several minutes later, and we're at 1300 and something. And uh, just goes to show you, quarter inch hoses suck ass. And that's the reason why I don't screw with them. So, just starting to purge out some of that there and there, which will be stuff locked underneath of the uh, valve core. That'll raise up some. It's coming back down a little. So, anyhow, we're going to go ahead and switch back over to the blue and get this thing recharged. Ain't got all day for this crap. That's the reason why you don't pull through your manifolds, even on a tiny system. Alright, so I valved it off and it held right to 1500 mark. Zero, zero, no drop at all. So, I'm feeling pretty confident that our coils and everything are sealed up and all of our brace joints are good to go. I'm going to uh, let it pull a little longer. I got some other things I can do. It's dropped some down to 1200. Just the amount of time this has taken is just way too long. Uh, I would have preferred to have gotten it done a lot quicker. Um, so anyhow, by the time uh, that reaches it, we'll be finished some of the other things. All right, so we got everything back together here, got it recharged. You can see we have a little bit of bubbles there. That's the spec. Problem, the reason why everything's low is because it's 37 degrees outside here. So. Um, suction pressure is not horrible. As soon as we bring that head pressure up, we'll be looking good. So I'm going to plug this in inside. We'll make sure that that uh, looks a little bit better. See our pressure uh, modify out a little bit better. Stabilize out a little bit better, I should say. But we got everything back together. Everything, uh, for the most part, went pretty good. All fit back together, all pretty like. So it's going to wrap this one up. We just got to finish changing that control on the cold rail, which it's pretty cut and dry, so we'll do that real quick. Yeah, you can see the box temperature is already 36 degrees, so that uh, didn't even have to really run. Might as well see what our set temperature, T1's 36, T2's 21. Yeah, so it's set for 35 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and lock this thing up. That'll keep people from screwing things up. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.